The Tech Nerdist channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. Hey folks, Technivorous here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Fusion 360 and we're going to be using a couple of its built-in tools in order to create a texture pattern around a deformed cylinder. So basically this is going to create a uniform texture around the entirety of this object even though the object is not flat or straight. So we're going to jump right into it and enjoy. Alright, so this object is going to be very similar to the object we're going to create. This is actually an ice fishing handle for an ice fishing rod and I decided to add some bump outs in a textured style to it. So, we're gonna be doing one that is slightly less complicated than this, but still as functional, just so you can kinda of see how I use this technique to texture this fishing rod handle. So, let's go ahead and start a new file. And we're gonna be very simple when we do this. The first thing we're gonna do is create a sketch, and we're gonna do it on the front plane. And in order to do this, we are going to need to revolve extrude. So we're going to need a line to revolve around. And we'll start very simple. We'll do a 60 millimeter high line. And then we need some other things. So what we need to do is hit escape here, or you can also click the check mark. We are going to bump this out, let's say 15 millimeters and bump this out to say 25 millimeters and then we will go ahead and do a couple more of these let's say 20 and we'll stick this one out again uh, it doesn't matter where you put these lines you'll see what's going on after we do a little experimentation but Basically, you need one at the top and the bottom for sure. And the next thing we're going to do is create a spline. And we're just going to go through the open endpoints of all of our objects. Now, you can see that this curve is far more drastic than the one on my fishing rod handle. Uh, maybe this could be a nice vase or something. It doesn't really matter. This is more about technique than form. So, we are going to hit Revolve Extrude. And we're going to select these three faces for the profile. And for the axis here, we're going to go ahead and select this far left line. And as you can see, that will pop out this object. Now this is going to work pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and hit OK. And it looks like a bell. That's not bad. So let's add some texture to our, to our bell shape. So what we want to do is click the top surface now. Um, we're going to create a sketch on the top. Make sure you're not picking the top plane. You want this actual face right here. So uh, we'll go ahead and recenter this a little bit. And then what we need to do is create a construction line. So to do that, we're going to create a line going straight up. Um, and then we'll escape out of that and hit X. And select that line and hit X. There we go. Um, then we need to create another line. And if it's still giving you a construction line, all you need to do is hit X one more time, and it will give you a regular line. So we're going to create an angle here. We're going to do this on both sides of our construction line. It doesn't matter how far apart these are because we're about to adjust that. So what we want to do is use symmetry. We're going to select the outer two lines first. And then the middle line, you can see it tucks them up even next to each other, and that's what we want. Also important to note is that this circle here is the widest part of our profile. So that is the bottom, and it sticks out the furthest. We want to make sure all of our lines extend past that point. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab the dimension key, and we'll go ahead and dimension one of those lines to the middle. And since they're symmetrical, it doesn't really matter. We'll say three here. 
then the next thing we need to do is create one last line. And it doesn't really matter how far out you put this line, but you want to, again want to ensure that it's outside the outer perimeter of the circle. So um, we're going to go ahead and connect this. We want to make sure that it's straight. And you can see that it is not straight. It's trying to put this at a right angle to this line. So we want to go ahead and highlight that connection and delete it. And then we're going to hit horizontal or vertical and hit that line again. Now we have this sticking out past where we need it. And that is pretty well perfect so far. Um, in order to make this technique work a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and make a circle here. Um, because the more of these you add, the more single objects you're going to have. And if we don't have something connecting them all in the middle, we can't join them together and reduce the math time. So uh, I'll explain that a little bit better in just a second. Right now I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. And then we are going to hit Extrude. And what we want to do is grab this inner circle, this face, this face, and this face. So everything's connected and there's one spike coming out. And we're going to go ahead and go to the side view here and type in negative 2. And it's trying to make a cutout. Instead of making a cutout, we actually want a new body. So that way we can multiply and manipulate this body. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK there. Then we are going to select our new body. So expand the bodies menu here. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this Bell. Just so we don't get confused. Then we're going to take this and once body number two is selected, we are going to hit create, pattern, circular pattern. Now that we've done that, we need to select the object to encircle. So basically we have our object selected, that's this object. So we need to select the axis, and in this case we're going to use this curve. Um, you can use a broken curve, it doesn't have to be a full circle, and it'll just kind of follow that pattern. Uh, but working with the circle here works really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to about 30. Then, um, since we are creating a bunch more bodies, I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. So uh, what we want to do, since we already have 30 different bodies here, uh, 31 if you include the bell, is reduce that. Because we're going to do the same thing downward, and we don't want to have a 1,000 objects. So what we're going to do is toggle off bell here so you can't see it then we're gonna select the top one shift select the bottom and then hit combine uh, it's gonna give us the option to join them we don't need to hit new component or keep tools we just want to make sure that it's on join and hit OK now that reduces our hierarchy quite a bit I now have two objects again but this one object is quite a bit larger so we can go ahead and turn the bell back on and then we're gonna grab body again and we're just gonna click this rectangular pattern up here um, and since we already have our object selected, which is going to be our texture, we can grab the direction. Now, the direction can be any vertical line. Uh, it works really well if you just grab one of the ends. And then you're going to want to drag it down to meet the bottom. The best way to line it up that way, um, because we're going to the extent here. So uh, basically, uh, if you know your height, you can set it to absolute and type in the height. And then again, we have three lines. Let's go ahead and increase this to six. You can see it increases the amount that we have. Um, I could go ahead and increase it again or even a couple more times. Let's try 15. That's pretty packed in there. Let's try 20. Okay, so and it looks just like there's just bars running around here, but there really isn't. So then what we're going to do is we're going to hit OK again. Now I'm going to hide the bell one more time. And if I wanted to, I could combine all of these into one body again. And that actually works better for doing the math later. So we're going to do that. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that there's something touching all of them. So we're going to select the top face again. We're going to grab a circle. We're going to make it smaller than our inner diameter. And then we're just going to close the sketch. So hit Finish and then extrude and basically you can just rotate down to the bottom here um, and for the extent we'll put two object and select no two object 
select this face. Okay, so it's going all the way through them. And you can see it's making a cut. We don't want to do that. We want to join. So we should make an update here in a second. There we go. Um, and now the whole thing actually becomes one object. Because it's passing through those, it automatically joins them and we don't have to select them individually. The other thing to note is if you don't have the bell turned off, it will join them to the bell as well. And we don't want to do that just yet because we're going to need the bell by itself right now. So let's go ahead and turn off this, turn on the bell. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy. Um, but what we need to do is go to modify and then move and then create copy. Uh, it won't let us click OK yet because we haven't moved the bell. So once we move it, it lets us hit OK. I put in a value that I remember here is one millimeter on the X, so we're going to hit OK. Then we're going to select the bell, which is now bell one, and then we're going to move it back. So move, and we'll do the exact opposite, negative one. You can see they realign, and that is perfect. Now we need to manipulate this bell. So we are going to select the second bell, the one with the one denomination after it, and then we are going to hit the Q button. Um, oh, it undid our selection. Okay, so let's select this outer face here, since that's the only thing we really need to pull. And let's say one millimeter. Okay, so now I have a big bell, and a little bell. A little bell disappeared, big bell disappeared. So we're going to turn off the little bell and we're going to turn back on the spikes. Okay, so you can see I have this object that just looks like it's got a bunch of uniform spikes coming out of it. Now, what we need to do is another combine. So we're going to hit combine, we're going to select our target body as the bell, and then for the tool bodies, we're going to use body two. Now, we still have it set to join, so we don't want to hit OK just yet. What we really want to do is change the operation to intersect. We'll take a minute for the computer to update here to show you what we just did. Uh, but it shouldn't take too long. There we go. So now you can see that it is going to get rid of everything that's yellow. So it's going to cut this off in that shape around there. Okay, so it looks like we're just making another bell right now, but go ahead and watch what happens when we hit OK. As I said, it does take a minute. Trust me, if we hadn't have uh, joined these all into one body, there would be one body for each individual spike and the computation time for that is ridiculous. So here we have our bell-shaped texture. Now we just need to add it to the bell, and that's the reason we made it a little bit bigger so it sticks out. So if we turn the bell back on, you can see we have the same shape, but with these bump outs going all the way around it, and they're pretty uniform because we use the exact same shape. We just made it a millimeter bigger on the outer surface. So everything is looking pretty good. The last step is to go ahead and combine these using join into one final piece. And it looks like it's working there. We can hit OK. Um, and you'll notice that some of these lines disappear as it joins it into one object. And that is a good thing. So let's see here. It looks like we have just one object. It is the bell. It is textured. And if we move around, you'll notice that it has joined this face, so it is one complete face. Just join this face, so it is one complete face. And since we're just kind of having fun, let's go ahead and make this a shell. So let's select this face, and we'll make it a 2 millimeter shell. Maybe it wants to freeze on me. Anyway, 
that's basically the gist of it. You can see how to texture a curved object. I found this really, really interesting. Um, I was doing uh, some items the other day, not just the fishing rod, but some other grip items as well. And this is a really good technique for putting a pattern on to something that you really need to hang on to. So I'm not gonna wait for Fusion 360 to haul this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. So if you appreciate it, don't forget to leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. If there's anything you want to know how to do in Fusion 360, you can always leave it in the comments down below. I try to respond to those and respond as quickly as possible. Sometimes it does take me a little while, so if I don't get back to you right away, just bear with me. That's going to be it. Technivorous out. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.